in particular in the United States. It was a tremendous shock. Uh, the United States had become accustomed to thinking of the Soviet Union as a rather backward agrarian nation. And here they were actually beating us with the first artificial satellite. This is something that we had pledged to do ourselves. Both the Soviets and the Americans had agreed that they would try to launch an artificial satellite as part of the International Geophysical Year, which took place in 1957 and 58, it was devoted to scientific exploration of the Earth and its environment, and the satellite program was to be part of that. But here we had been scooped by this supposedly a backwards nation. Now, this was followed up very quickly in November of 1957 with a second Sputnik. And this one was carrying the first living creature sent into orbit, a dog named Laika, inside a sealed uh, capsule. Uh, and uh, the satellite itself was uh, attached and remained attached to the upper stage of its rocket that put it into orbit. And altogether, this package weighed half a ton. So this was a tremendous amount of mass that the uh, rocket, the Soviet rocket, had put into a very high orbit. And um, people in the States and in the West realized that this meant that the Soviets had the capability to launch bombs that could be orbited around the Earth and brought down at any time of the Soviets choosing onto American cities. And what you see here is the, the shock of this realization hitting the United States. And you see in the cartoon, the editorial cartoon, Uncle Sam is sitting up in bed, startled. The headboard of the bed says complacency. And uh, hearing the beep beep of, of Sputnik, and the caption at the bottom says, awake at last, question mark. So you get the idea why Sputnik has been called a technological Pearl Harbor. Well, the United States tried to follow that up in December of 1957 with the launch of its own satellite, which was called Vanguard. Now, Von Braun had nothing to do with this. It was kept as a uh, program that was supposed to be civilian in nature. That's why they didn't want to use Von Braun's team. Here is the Navy's Vanguard rocket on the pad with the satellite. Its rocket engine is starting up, and here it goes. And back down it comes. It rises only a few feet before plunging back to the ground and exploding in a ball of fire. What a tremendous embarrassment for the United States, especially since unlike the Soviet launches, uh, which were done in secret and only announced after they were successful, our Vanguard launch was broadcast on national television live as it happened. So this was truly adding insult to injury for the American public. Um, not only had we been beaten by the Soviets in not once but twice with the, the first artificial satellites, but we tried to get ours off the ground and we ended up in a devastating explosion. Von Braun had secretly, all this time, in the, in the period uh, surrounding Sputnik and in the weeks and months afterward, been putting together his own satellite launcher called the Jupiter C. It basically used a intermediate range missile called the Redstone, which was basically an upgrade of some of the V2 technology, again burning alcohol with the liquid oxygen, with a rocket engine developed uh, by North American Aviation that produced 75,000 pounds of thrust. Uh, so not powerful enough to put uh, a warhead into space, but powerful enough uh, to send one, uh, or not powerful, I should say, enough to send it uh, from the United States to the Soviet Union, but powerful enough to be used for intermediate range targets. Um, but in this case, Von Braun added uh, several upper stages, uh, solid fueled upper stages, to the Redstone and called it the Jupiter C. And at the end there, you see a pencil-shaped satellite, which was developed under the leadership of um, James Van Allen uh, from Iowa, uh, University of Iowa, and um, 
uh, with the, the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in, in uh, Pasadena, California. And this is a cutaway drawing of Explorer 1. And you can see it's loaded with scientific instruments, including a sensor for cosmic rays, uh, micrometeorites, uh, transmission, transmitting equipment, and um, it was all put atop the Jupiter C. And on January 31st, 1958, it became the first successful U.S. satellite. And the you can see the Jupiter C lifting off at night here from the Air Force test range at Cape Canaveral in Florida. And um, Explorer One went into orbit around the Earth, and it began sending back data. And indeed. Uh, James Van Allen's instruments aboard Explorer 1 led to the discovery of a belt of radiation around the Earth, which became known as the Van Allen Radiation Belt. Now, aside from the scientific payoff, the psychological boost to the country was tremendous. Finally, the United States was in the space race. You can see at a post-launch press conference, Von Braun on the right, Van Allen in the center, and uh, James Pickering, uh, the director of JPL on the left, hoisting above their heads a model of Explorer 1. And here you see Von Braun on the cover of Time magazine a couple of weeks after the launch of Explorer 1, finally taking his place as the, um, the hero of the uh, space race for the Americans. Of course, Von Braun's greatest achievements were still ahead uh, when he led the American effort to put humans on the moon, specifically the de development of the moon rocket, as we shall see in future weeks. Thanks a lot. This is Andrew Chaik.